Hello, I'm Stephen Mangan and welcome to Have I Got News For You. We were hoping we could record this show at 8 o'clock on a Thursday because at least there'd be some applause. <laughs> Paul, how have you been keeping busy? Uh, I've been helping the uh, farmer next door in his farm to rotate his livestock. Did I make them dizzy? So, uh... <laughs> Ian, off anywhere nice for Easter? Uh, I, th I thought I'd try the front door. Yeah, no, I think, I think I might try that. Or maybe the back door. I mean, there's a huge range. And we know you've been suffering from a lack of chopped tomatoes. Um, well, I can't believe it, but actually having... Um, whinged on this program last week saying I couldn't find any chopped tomatoes, any frosties. Um, one of my neighbours left a package um, at uh, uh, my door. Uh, you'll see it behind me, including some chopped tomatoes and some frosties in a variety pack, which is unbelievably kind of her. I must be the least deserving person this week to receive a package of anything. I haven't been getting on very well with a farmer next door and he left a package on my doorstep as well. <laughs> 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 on Ian's team is Zoe Lyons. Zoe, you're down in Brighton. How is lockdown on the coast? <laughs> you know, we're lucky we've got the seafront. We're all allowed to go out for a little bit and, and enjoy it. But uh, the fact that we're sitting here finding this all quite odd, that, you know, sort of an Orwellian new world, sitting here just talking in front of a camera and I've got two men outside in a, in a van wearing masks and gloves. I haven't had an afternoon like that since Amsterdam in 1987. Feeling quite nostalgic <laughs> there. <laughs> Joining Paul tonight, the Reverend Richard Coles. Where are you beaming in from, Richard? I'm beaming in from my parish of Findon in sun-kissed Northamptonshire. How are you coping with all the technology? Uh, I've not been very good. I've tried to Skype a service, but unfortunately I booked a taxi to Heathrow instead. So I've just referred <laughs> people to um, the services which are going out on BBC One. Would you like to see a clip of a priest in Italy during his virtual sermon? Nothing would please me more. <laughs> Some ideas for you there, Richard. Thank you very much. Listen, I'm at the white heat of technology. I've got an e-bike now, except I broke it yesterday. So I'm back on my acoustic bike now, which seems to be working quite well. So. I think your mistake is you were e-biking in uh, Leicestershire and e-biking is really a Yorkshire activity. <laughs> <laughs> How can Stephen get a little tap of the glass because he makes a good joke? There's been plenty of good jokes to this week and last week. I didn't hear any tap of the glass. Doesn't matter. Forget it. Doesn't matter. I'm not one. Don't, doesn't matter. Just leave it. I'll get my own bleeding glass next week. Uh, to help us out during lockdown, a lot of people are determined to bring a bit of culture into our lives. Here's one woman and her neighbour sharing a duet. <laughs> That's one hell of an echo. <laughs> Refusing to have her plans ruined by lockdown, here's one diner insisting on tasting the wine before she drinks. Exceptional. That's given me some ideas for communion on Easter Day. Yes. <laughs> so on with the show and we start with the biggest stories of the week. Ian and Zoe, take a look at this. Scene of 1950s joy, picnicking when you could be with other people. Uh, that's someone being arrested for taking his exercise. That's a Dalek shouting self, isolate. Somebody knitting their own body hair. Uh, is the London Philharmonic Orchestra getting together in the way they can now? Ah, that's Her Majesty, reading out her shopping list. And she needs to chopped tomatoes and frosties. <laughs> you want to start with the elephant in the room? The fact that our Prime Minister is actually in hospital? Yes. It's not great for comedy, okay. is it? Um, but I think we should probably acknowledge that we, um, we don't wish him ill, we wish him well, we want him to get back. Um, and, you know, obviously then we can be rude about him again. But there is there's absolutely nothing uh, for anyone in having the Prime Minister of your country actually ill with the pandemic that's going on. So I think we should acknowledge that. Who is in charge? Somebody, I hope. Um, I think technically it's Dominic Raab, though he wasn't quite sure to start with. 
He said that the Prime Minister um, was uh, still OK and still in charge and very much in control. And then three hours later, he went into intensive care. So it's um, we've got some more mixed messages. I think at the moment it's Dominic Raab. Yeah, no, no word from Priti Patel. No. Um, my guess is, though, that given that, you know, most of the cabinet and a lot of the, the number 10 are actually ill at the moment, they're relying on the civil service. So the one person you presumably don't want in charge when the civil <laughs> servants have got to do anything is Priti Patel. <laughs> That's just a guess. I'm just, mm. I'm just imagining it. She doesn't have a great pandemic face, unfortunately. It's, uh, she's got that permanent expression on her face that you have when you've won an argument with your partner, which is... <laughs> Which doesn't go down well in a global crisis. Uh, yes, Dominic Raab is uh, the man in charge, uh, we're told. Uh, he's a black belt in karate, so he's the perfect man to lead a country in lockdown as he's used to spending all day in his pyjamas. Who has been uh, the big ratings hit this week? Yes, the Queen. Yes, the Queen was... Uh, uh, she addressed the nation. Uh, as, she, as she left London, she said, we're all in this together. It seemed to go down very well. She said in three minutes what everybody else had been trying to say sort of on a national level in about sort of four weeks and um, then went off again. It was, um, I thought it was rather good, actually. As heads of state go, I mean, you want Trump? Oh, God. <laughs> who has had to go? Is this the um, Scottish health minister who was seen flouting her own rules about staying close to home to save the NHS? And uh, not once, but twice was caught at her second home in Fife when she lives in Edinburgh and it's a good hour's drive, even in light traffic. So uh, she <laughs> had to step down. Her and the New Zealand Health Secretary, he was also caught doing the same thing. Exactly, and it's a much longer journey for him to get to Fife. Much longer, <laughs> even much longer. in light traffic. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> He had to swim 10,000 miles, apparently, and the last 1,000 miles being the most difficult because they were over land. Yeah. <laughs> and it's the fact that both of them didn't just do it once. They got caught the first time, and the, the, the Scottish um, medical officer got caught by the police, um, but then just did it again. And he yeah. thought, that that's pretty bold. And the New Zealand guy was caught going to the beach, so he thought, oh, all right, I'll go for a very long bike ride and I'll take my car off first. It's, it's the message, it's, it's very odd when the message doesn't go in even though you're delivering it. Yeah, he called himself an idiot for going out mountain biking in defiance of his own lockdown measures. He was spotted after he drove his bike to the mountain in a truck emblazoned with his own face. <laughs> <laughs> the idiot. I found a wonderful way of ensuring social isolation, by the way. I'm teaching myself the accordion. No one oh, has been man. within 500 yards of the vicarage <laughs> for the past fortnight. It's going very well. <laughs> How did Matt Hancock stick his oar into football? Oh, this was about footballers' wages, wasn't it? That uh, footballers should um, give up 30% of their wages to pay for uh, the NHS or, you know, support the NHS. And also perhaps uh, individuals that work at their own clubs who are not being paid £70,000 a week. It seems to me fairly... A fairly good idea that the footballers can take a pay cut to support the other employees of the club. That wouldn't be too difficult, I would have thought. So I'm not sure what the complaint is there. Well, old Mac Hancock didn't ask other millionaires to take a pay cut, did he? No, 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 he didn't, no. I think you missed the, the one where he asked Jacob Rees-Mogg and the other hedge fund managers to take a, a pay cut and give the proceeds to the NHS. That was a good speech. We enjoyed that one. A lot of Tory donors um, have been asked, basically, not to take any money in the next year and to give the money to the NHS. It was a great speech. A lot of people didn't hear it, but I, I thought it was terrific. How has Manchester City's Kyle Walker been helping uh, and hindering the crisis? Didn't he get caught going out in his motor car to a party or something, or some barbecue? Anyway, he was associating with people in a way that broke every single regulation that the government recommends, and he's been rightly and soundly scolded for it. Yes, it was a little more than a, a party. He, uh, he was, he's been hindering social distancing by hosting, according to The Sun, a £2,000 sex party. He's been distributing cash to local sex workers, which is good, who might otherwise have been furloughed. I mean, maybe they were furloughed. I don't know what Kyle's into. What's been the good news for Jacob Rees-Mogg? 
uh, good news for Jacob. Um, it's an opportunity, the global um, recession following the pandemic. Um, I mean, there's nothing like following the four horsemen with some handy investor tips. Um, and I think Jacob's firm has said there's money to be made in that there bug. Um, and uh, he's advising people how they can do it. Uh, the investment fund he set up and still owns 15 percent of Somerset Capital Management uh, have issued a statement saying that the current crisis is a once in a generation opportunity for super normal returns. Super spreading the money. What's super normal? Isn't super normal? You'd either have super returns or normal returns. What's a super normal return? One would rather expect the Honourable Member to be more precise in his use of language. This was another week of lockdown, which included the Queen raising morale. According to the Times, Her Majesty and Prince Philip are in isolation in Windsor with a skeleton staff. Well, that's one way of making sure the staff can't catch it. <laughs> According to The Sun, professional footballer Kyle Walker broke lockdown to have a £2,000 orgy with two hookers at his flat. <laughs> See, if he'd done it in the park, it would have counted as exercise. Uh, yeah. Here's Paul and Richards. Have a look at this. Two lovely mice, beautiful mice there. McDonald's initiate new hygiene procedures at drive through Yeah, that's an actor called Al St John, uh, and that's uh, an actor who isn't. Someone switches on 5G. <laughs> This is a story where mice are capable of many different facial expressions and scientists are now beginning to work out what each facial expression means. One facial expression might mean, oh, Sheffield Wednesday, I've lost at home again. Um, I wonder if a polar neck sweater would suit me, that sort of thing. So this is the news that scientists at the Max Planck Institute in Germany have proved <laughs> mice have a range of six facial expressions. Uh, see if you can guess what some of them are by looking at my face. Paul, here's the first one. I'm very pleased because I've just found a new food source. Yeah, delight. An expression the mice showed uh, when they were given some sucrose to lick. Here's another one. What does this expression uh, that the mouse showed on its face? What is this? What is this? Uh... Middle age spread. <laughs> <laughs> it's disgust. It is disgust. Why would a mouse, what, what would disgust a mouse? Mouldy cheese or? Tasting bitter quinine gave them that expression. In the Ooh. experiment, when they were startled by a weak electric shock to the tail, the mice made a grimace, puffing out their cheeks and squinting, an expression they've been wearing a lot recently, as like the rest of us, they've been having to learn how to log on to video meetings. What have a flock of sheep been enjoying in Monmouthshire? Bringing new life into the world as their spring lambs gamble on the Welsh sward. I have no idea, Stephen. <laughs> Gambling is illegal. They've been playing blackjack and five stud poker. <laughs> what they've done is they've taken the opportunity of exploring a children's playground at Raglin Farm Park. Let's have a look. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> oh, excellent. Oh, look, I love oh. them. It's brilliant. <laughs> That's great. Uh, it's quite odd to see them on that roundabout, though, isn't it? They've just got no concept of social distancing at all, those sheep. Unlike this cat. <laughs> <laughs> Why did the tweets between Brenda Boyd and North Tyneside Council attract attention? I've missed this one. Let's have a look. First, Brenda asked, just checking, is the garden bin collection back as normal? The council replied, <laughs> yes, Brenda, it is. To which Brenda responded. <laughs> to which the council responded. Just checking, Brenda, is that the emoji you wanted to send? <laughs> and Brenda replied. It was meant to be a thumbs up, but I may have the wrong glasses on. Sorry if it was offensive. <laughs> Yes, this is the news that scientists have proved mice have a range of six facial expressions. Key indicators that a mouse is happy are certain eye movements, mouth shape and going clip clippity clop on the stairs. <laughs> right, round two, the picture spin quiz. Fingers on buzzers, here you go. Oh, hang on. Oh, find a buzzer. Have you got a buzzer? I've got a cowbell. Right, Paul, you got a buzzer? Yeah, I've got something. I'll hold up John Betjeman's Guide to English Parish Churches. Is that all right? That sounds great. Makes a terrific sound. Let's go.
<laughs> it's Richard. That's my ding. Unless Ian already held up his thing and we couldn't hear it. I did. I don't think it's a very good audio guide, though. I think I may, <laughs> I may give up and just shout hello. Richard, what's this about? This was the news that Keir Starmer was elected leader of the Labour Party, uh, replacing Jeremy Corbyn and replacing, indeed, a lot of Corbyn supporters in the shadow cabinet as he went along. And his, um, uh, he made it a big priority to reach out in particular to the Jewish community, which he felt the previous regime had perhaps um, alienated a little bit. I think getting circumcised live on the one show was taking it a bit far. But uh, we look forward to a, a newly revived relationship uh, between the Labour Party and its traditional Jewish members. But very traditional members, if he's got <laughs> circumcised. <laughs> Yes, this is the news that Keir Starmer has been elected the leader of the Labour Party after winning a landslide victory. The new statesman described the scale of the win as unexpected. Yes, the words Labour and landslide victory don't often go together. <laughs> what has his convincing victory allowed Keir Starmer to change? Well, a lot of the cabinet, the shadow cabinet. So I'm getting ahead of myself. It's the government of national unity. By the time you see this, we may have one. Uh, Keir Starmer may have stepped in. Um, it wouldn't be a bad idea, um, but he's, he's got rid of a lot of old Corbynites. Yes, notable departures include Richard Bergen, who last year gave us so many wonderful moments, <laughs> like this one. <laughs> we want the Tories out as soon as possible. We want to sort out Brexit. We also want to sort out austerity, which has lasted for nine years. Polls say you won't win. Pardon? The polls say you won't win. The polls said we wouldn't win last time. You didn't. But I... <laughs> Speaking about Bergen's departure, one MP told The Sun this week, I just feel sorry for the village that's getting its idiot back. <laughs> now, who is back in the shadow cabinet? Ed Miliband's back. He is. The Sun in particular was delighted to see Ed Miliband return to frontline politics. What pun headline did they welcome his appointment with? Miliband of Brothers. Millie Vanilli. <laughs> Yeah. Me vanilla. Brilliant. And it was later discovered that Ed Miliband was miming to his own speeches. <laughs> <laughs> they went with, look who's back, Bacon. Ooh. <laughs> is, strictly speaking, is that a pun? It's not really a pun, is it? It's more a collection of words that don't really belong together. And you have to remember a photograph of him eating bacon. They did print that snap next to the headline. Here it is. Yeah. Unable to eat a bacon sandwich. The last time the Labour leader was in step with the Jewish community. <laughs> this is the news that Keir Starmer has been made leader of the Labour Party. You must have noticed it. It was all over page 19 of the Mirror. One of Keir Starmer's <laughs> first decisions as leader was to appoint Ed Miliband as the shadow business secretary. Ed is currently in isolation. Nothing to do with the virus, it's just his family still won't talk to him after he shafted his brother. <laughs> Keir Starmer also appointed leadership rival Wigan MP Lisa Nandy to the role of Shadow Foreign Secretary. She'll now be in charge of dealing with parts of the world foreign to Labour, like the North. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the next one. Fingers back on buzzers. <laughs> oh, that's a cowbell. That must be Zoe. <laughs> 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 it's factory Sorry. round here's just knocked off two hours early. So I, I haven't got the answer, I just wanted to blow it. What is it? It's one of these. Is it a Vuvuzela? That might mean nothing to you, but in ten minutes' time this place will be full of Vikings. <laughs> <laughs> Zoe. Well, it's a guy who spent a year and a half trying to recreate the flavour of KFC at home. And he's been experimenting with the 11 different herbs and spices and has finally cracked the code to, to, to create KFC at home. And he's put it on YouTube and people are so happy because they miss it, because they're missing restaurants. So once a week at home, because we can't go out and eat in restaurants, I try and create a sort of holiday style taverna at home for me and the missus. I'll play the waiter, she plays the customer. I'll ignore her for about an hour and a half, then I'll bring her something she didn't want, and then I'll over a charger at the end. And it, it just really feels like we've had a nice night out. Uh, yeah, this is Dan Fell from Warwickshire, who's been labelled a modern day hero by the Daily Mail this week for recreating the KFC fried chicken recipe in his own kitchen. Uh, it took him 18 months. Zoe, 11 herbs and spices, do you know what they are? Creosote. I know what a lot of them are, right? There's paprika, ginger, pepper, white pepper, salt, uh, I can never say it, oregano, 
Oregano? Oregano? It sounds like half the Wombles are in there. What food is Nurse Claire Stewart? Here she is, now obsessed with and why? Oh, goodness. Um, I'm going to say... I'm going to say beetroot, only because I've got five in my own cupboard. You've got five beetroot in your cupboard? I've got five beetroot. I sort of panic bought beetroot. You panic bought beetroot and I rushed out to the shops and got this. <laughs> this gives me hours of pleasure, this does. <laughs> I bet it does. Uh, she told The Sun <laughs> that after a life-saving stem cell transplant, despite never tasting the snack before, she was left with an addiction for pickled onion flavour monster munch. Oh, yeah. We need to self-isolate her. I'll swap her a beetroot for a pickle, bag of pickle flavour. Ah, you see, there we are. That's the currency of the future, beetroot. Get what you like with fire beetroot. You can. This is the news that a Warwickshire man has come up with his own recipe for KFC. Now he's got to master the harder trick of convincing people that a tiny pot of 12 baked beans can really be called a portion. <laughs> also in the news, it emerged that members of the House of Lords are unhappy with the quality of the food that's been on offer there. The Times revealed that Lord Naseby put six official questions about snacks to the chair of the House of Lords Services Committee. That's his mistake. He should be asking the master of the rolls. <laughs> <laughs> The Sun also revealed that another unpopular choice in the House of Lords is Ladyfingers. <laughs> Don't you've ever heard Ladyfingers speak in the Lords. <laughs> in other food news, the man was arrested for doing 110 miles per hour on the M1 while travelling from Nottingham to London to buy a loaf of bread because it was one pound cheaper. True. The arresting officer reached for his baton, which the driver then offered to buy off him. <laughs> Anyone want to see a dog owner trying to trick their pet into eating carrots? Yes. <laughs> Time now for the Missing Words round, which this week features as its guest publication, Scottish Place Name News. <laughs> so comprehensive, it includes both addresses of the Scottish Chief Medical Officer. <laughs> and we start with David Beckham criticised for what with his bangers and mash? Using his hands? Not giving 20%. The answer is David Beckham criticised for having coleslaw with his bangers and mash. Ooh. What a b <laughs> <laughs> This is the headline making news that David Beckham is upsetting people with his culinary choices. Here's the offending sausage. And here's his meal. <laughs> According to the Mirror, Gwyneth Paltrow made a veggie paella. Oh. Bearing in mind the kind of candles she makes, I hope veggie's not a misprint. <laughs> Next, what TV show is disappointingly unrealistic? The news. Britain's Got Talent. This one. The answer is the use of made-up Scottish place names by TV <laughs> show <laughs> is disappointingly unrealistic. <laughs> This is an article from Scottish Place Name News, calling on TV dramas to come up with more realistic fictional Scottish place names when they're setting dramas in Scotland. In particular, the article singled out one show for using the made-up name of Kirk Daroch, which Scottish Place Name News described as a promising effort, yet scarcely plausible. Should have been Kirk Douglas. <laughs> when anyone says, are you from Kirk Douglas, all the inhabitants, they just come one at a time. <laughs> no, I'm from Kirk Douglas. No, I'm from Kirk Douglas. <laughs> Scottish place name Sorry. news contains all the popular locks. Loch Ness, Loch Lomond, and the least popular, Loch Down. <laughs> Next, woman reveals she what in the name of scientific research? Eats nothing but beetroot and drinks four litres of wine a day. Deep fried herself. <laughs> A uh, woman reveals she has filled her tights with helium and has floated over Winchester Cathedral in the name of scientific research. Woman reveals she had sex with a dolphin in the name of scientific Ooh. research. This is Margaret Howe, who claims that as part of a NASA experiment in the 60s, she had sex <laughs> with a dolphin called Peter. <laughs> That's what he told her. If you want to see footage of that, it's on David Attenborough's Extremely Blue Planet. <laughs> <laughs> Their first night of passion got off to a bad start when Peter the Dolphin got entangled in her fishnets. <laughs> 
And lastly, the name Lincoln Doddy comes from the rhyming slang for what? Pink and muddy. Well, it in boots for the gay community. <laughs> Dodgy test for antibody. <laughs> <laughs> the looky likey band Shoddy Waddy. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is the name Lincoln Doddy comes from the rhyming slang for anybody. This is an article in Scottish Place Name News which reveals that Lincoln Doddy comes from Lewis Grassic Gibbon's classic novel, Sunset Song. And you know lockdown's gone on too long when you order that book on Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> so, Paul and Richard have, and Ian and Zoe have. It'll be very cryptic, Stephen. Here we go. I don't want to give anything away. We want to catch the surprise on your faces. You're not mice. We want to see the no. range of emotions. Okay. okay. Well, yeah, me and Richard, will, we'll, we'll do surprise and shock. So, the final scores are Paul and Richard have four, Ian and Zoe have six. And I leave you with the news that there are fears for Trump's mental health as he proudly shows Congress his invisible budgie. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, an important public information film. Chris Whitty was going to do that, but he didn't have the right crockery. <laughs> Richard, would you like to play us out on your accordion? <gasps> yes! He's back and he's going remote, but don't worry, it's still as cheeky as ever with a guest list to match. The Graham Norton Show is next. And a brief appearance from Mr Alan Partridge is among the Laugh Out Loud moments on Peter Kay's Comedy Shuffle at 9.30. And now, a message from all of us to all of you. Together, we'll get through. <laughs>